In this video, let's explore the amazing process of pollen pistol interaction. Pollen is the yellow powdery substance that is seen in a flower. It represents the male part of a flower. It's also called as the male gametophyte. Gametophyte. Pistil represents the female part of the flower and it has three parts. This part over here is the stigma. Then this elongated region is called as the style. And at the end of the style, we have a bulb-like structure called as the ovary. So the question is, why should there be an interaction between pollen and pistil before the actual pollination process? Well, the answer is that the flower wants to prevent pollination by incompatible pollens. What makes a pollen incompatible? Well, there are two situations where a flower can consider a pollen to be incompatible. In the first scenario, let's imagine we have a garden. There are so many flowering plants there and all of them have their own pollens and they undergo pollination. Let's imagine the pollen from one species falls onto the stigma of another flower. Okay. Now, in nature, basically, the rule is that reproduction and pollination processes between two different species are not supported. Right. So when the pollen from another species falls on the stigma of a flower, that could be considered as an incompatible pollen. Now, the other scenario is a little tricky. Sometimes the pollen from the same flower, if it falls on the stigma, OK, that also could be considered as an incompatible pollen. So pollen from within the same flower. Now, as I said, it is quite tricky because this is the simplest type of pollination that can happen. So, we have the stigma and the pollen is right there. But then why does the flower not want it? So, why is the flower rejecting the pollen from its own flower? Maybe the flower wants to prevent self-pollination and it wants to promote what we call as cross-pollination. So, before we get into the discussion of pollen pistol interaction, let's ensure that we know what self and cross pollination is. So, first we have self pollination. Uh, this is a process where the pollen from the flower is falling on the stigma of the same flower. And this process, it can have advantage as well as disadvantage. Advantage is that through self pollination, we can quickly populate a certain area. Because the flower is not waiting for another flower uh, and or pollen to pollinate it. But the disadvantage is that when we continue to self-pollinate uh, for uh, so many generations, it can affect the plant in the form of inbreeding depression. Now, how this shows up on a plant or a flower is that suddenly the plant shows stunted growth. There is a decrease in its yield. Um, its immunity has reduced and so therefore uh, it comes under attack of insects and you know so on and so forth. Cross-pollination um, is the process where we have two flowers both from the same species and the pollen from the one flower it pollinates the um, a stigma of the other flower. Advantage of this process is that progenies uh, end up having more genetic variation. A disadvantage being that cross-pollination could sometimes be uncertain for the lack of another flower uh, of the same species. Um, it's interesting to note that in spite of self-pollination being available as a simple option for pollination for flowers, uh, most of the flowering plants prefer cross-pollination because uh, genetic variation in progeny helps the progeny to uh, survive better. So even though there is a quick pollination process, all the plants, most of the plants uh, prefer for cross-pollination. So getting back to the process, now we have a compatible pollen and the compatible pollen falls on a stigma. Okay. And let's say the stigma has accepted this particular pollen. So as a result, what the stigma would do is it would give out slimy secretions. And these would be absorbed by the pollen. And this leads to post-pollination events. Uh, 
the first post pollination event that we would notice is the germination of the pollen grain so here we have a pollen grain this is the outer protective layer of the pollen the cytoplasm and it has a single nucleus initially now these structures are going to be important uh, for the process later these are called as the germ pores okay germ pores Mm, subsequently what the pollen does is it divides into two cells so here we have a vegetative cell vegetative cell and a relatively smaller cell called as the generative cell generative cell and the pollen undergoes more growth and then finally what happens is that the cytoplasm bursts out through the germ pore and we can see the growth of pollen tube formation of pollen tube and within the pollen tube you see the cytoplasm being present and it carries two male gametes so once the pollen has germinated Uh, the pollen tube grows and it reaches the ovary of the uh, female uh, by growing through the stigmatal tissue so here we have the female part uh, this is stigma this is style and here we have ovary now taking a closer look at the ovary so ovary has two ends this is called as the chalazal end and the other end opposite to it is called as the micropylar end again this is important it's going to help us in the process and if you look close you will see there are about eight cells inside so this group of cells on top they are called as the antipodal cells antipodal cells then the two cells in the middle they are polar nuclei and then finally the two cells together are called synergids and the single cell over here is the egg cell okay now let's look at the process so when the pollen has fallen on the stigma and let's say the stigma has accepted the pollen and the pollen germinates the pollen tube starts growing right and the pollen tube grows it grows and it grows till it finally reaches the ovary now the question you can ask is like how come the pollen knows that it has to curve itself around and why is it not just entering straight into the ovary the answer could be a very specialized structure that is towards the micropylar end so this is the close up of the ovary and this is uh, the micropylar end micropylar end opposite to the chalazal end and these structures here are called filiform apparatus filiform apparatus filiform apparatus guides the pollen tube to efficiently reach the egg cell so that is what the pollen tube mainly seeks within the ovary so it makes it more efficient for the pollen tube to uh, contact the egg cell through the micropylar end rather than the chalazal end so as the pollen tube comes through the um, micropylar end it enters uh, and makes contact with the filiform apparatus you can see the two male gametes and the male gametes enter into the ovary one of the male gametes it wants to fuse with the egg cell so that gives rise to the embryo whereas the other egg cell moves towards the polar nuclei and this combination gives you what is called as the endosperm what are some of the applications of pollen pistil interaction the first application is that this process helps us in producing hybrid uh, seeds so for some crops uh, mostly like corn uh, if we know uh, what the pollination process is we can uh, 
create pollination between two different plants and that can lead to a uh, hybrid seed production the second is that we can enhance cross pollination so in some uh, fruit crops like apple uh, it is uh, important that cross pollination happens so we get good yield of the fruits now farmers who know this uh, ensure that they introduce bees into the orchards so uh, a proper uh, pollination is happening and they can increase the efficiency of the pollination so that can result in sweeter and more number of fruits as well finally we can prevent inbreeding depression so we already saw that when um, plants are uh, reproducing within the same flower or species they can undergo this process there are few species of plants uh, that are prone to inbreeding depression so we here we have the brassica species which is uh, the species of uh, cauliflower broccoli kale you know those um, so when they undergo inbreeding depression um we can help the plant to come out of it uh, by cross pollination and then finally uh, it also helps us in uh, conserving endangered species so here we have an orchid plant now orchids generally prefer self pollination okay so these this is one of the few plants where naturally uh, self pollination is happening but um, again because of continuous self pollination some flowers can experience what is called as a self incompatibility so they can no longer recognize the their own pollen when it falls on the stigma for pollination so understanding the process can help us help the plant overcome this sort of self incompatibility 